Her husband, Franklin, was the decorator in the family, and the home reflected his taste. All his talk during their first date about not enjoying growing up in England in his parents' drafty estate home was clearly a lie. Everything in the home screamed British colonialism. Teak woods, textiles printed with exotic patterns depicting local scenes, flora and fauna, and beautifully aged, well-traveled chocolate and tan leather trunks with tarnished brass buckles and clasps. Eve didn't mind. She liked the style. It evoked a bygone era that was genteel and elegant, while at the same time appearing relaxed and comfortable, so different from the sand-ridden trailers and tents from her youth. The same theme was carried into the nursery, replacing the deep mahogany and brown finishes found in the rest of the home. This room, dedicated to children and play, sported fresh whites and soft grays and whitewashed hardwood floors, ceiling fans, and, in place of curtains or blinds, plantation shutters. The room boasted a rattan rocking chair, a simple canopy bed with makeshift rails for Harper, and a white teak crib for Franklin. The floors were littered with plush rugs, colorful, oversized pillows, and stuffed exotic animals of all sizes. A crayon-decorated white bookcase was home to books, puzzles, and board games. Trunks were chock-full of toys. Harper's dollhouse and baby doll kitchen were kept well-ordered and off the floor. Eve accepted no excuses for it to be otherwise. Harper was still transitioning into a big girl bed, so she had access to her playthings throughout the night. On more than one occasion, Eve woke in the early morning hours to hear her daughter singing as she played happily by herself in the nursery. Eve had no idea kids could be so messy, but a maid showed up every day after breakfast and tidied up the place, making life more tolerable. She ordered the house and was gone before Eve returned from the gym. Back at the Society for Humanity, or SFH, commune, where she grew up, there were very few young people, and cleanliness seemed to be a priority for all the residents. Sure, one or two people were just a little unique in their attire and space, but they were the exceptions. Eve opened the fridge and pulled out a pitcher of unsweetened organic apple juice and filled a sippy cup for Harper. She had to give it a taste. The name sounded awful. What kind of person drinks unsweetened juice? Her first impulse was to spit it out into the sink, but she managed to swallow. It truly was unpleasant, and she couldn't believe her daughter drank the stuff. After distracting Harper with a video and food, Eve sat down at the table, ready to sort through the mail. The amount of paper waste annoyed Eve. Do people not understand it's the electronic age? The stack was high, so she categorized the pile into junk, bills, and other. She found one of particular interest. It was a 5 by 7 manila envelope with a disc and string closure and no return address. How fascinating. Eve opened it carefully because she feared paper cuts, not out of worry that she might damage the contents. Paper cuts were the absolute worst. Eve was sure that she would rather take a bullet than have a paper cut, but, she supposed, it depended on where the shot enters the body. Eve admonished herself for being so easily sidetracked. She stared back down at the envelope with anticipation. What she pulled out was a series of photos of herself from three years prior. Not just any photos, but ones that made her heart skip a beat. Eve, as a rule, tried, albeit largely unsuccessfully, to control her emotions. And when alone in her kitchen, looking at photos that could likely change her life, her emotions ran wild.